All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja show. And uh, as we promised on our we talk, so we get two better interviews we would like to uh, get today on the show. We just finished with one uh, uh, previous one where they talk about mental health illness, and I believe they so, will now get some kind of uh, details from that one. Our next conversation now about a uh, very interesting topic and about widows, but we're going to be speaking to Adebinkbe Akinfolajimi. She's an entrepreneur, and uh, we're going to discuss uh, the, the, the situation, creating a support system for widows. Uh, welcome to the show, madam. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, like uh, we always do as a tradition on the show, we always ask our guests how they are, honestly, because we know that there's a pandemic and a lot of things have changed the operating system of the world. So honestly, how are you? I'm very, very fine. I'm good. Thank you. I like that. I like that. Interesting. Okay, so uh, we, from what we gathered, uh, today's conversation would be around uh, creating a support system for widows. Uh, and first of all, we would like to ask, uh, what uh, um, built your interest for this uh, line of conversation? Why did you decide to get interested in uh, the support for widows in the first place? Let's start from there. Yeah, like, um, how do I start? where do I start from? I have a passion to help people around me. Mm -hmm. while, I was, while, while I was growing in, my mother was a philanthropist. And she was actually helping people around her. And I felt, uh, you have, any, any time you are available to help anyone, anyone that is in need, try as much as possible to put a smile on any face at any point in time. So when I was growing, I could see that a lot of people were around my mom till she died. In fact, when she died, uh, a lot of testimonies people were saying about her really, really inspired to me. So and I said, oh, I think the only thing I believe about living is when you touch other lives. It's not when you live on your own, when you live for yourself, but when others can say because of you, I didn't give up. So that, that was what inspired this move. Well, it's quite interesting. So how long have you been uh, um, doing this? And how has the experience been working with, uh, with widows and entrepreneurs so far? Look, like I said, when I was going, I can't say, say like 35 or 40 years ago, it started when I was a child. And uh, but officially, Only Voice Foundation started three years ago. OK. You know, before the year, before we made it official, I started, you know, within my community, I, I have a lot of kids on my scholarship scheme. Mm -hmm. I help people around me. And um, I see a lot of widows. And when I actually picked on widow was because um, there was a lady around my house and she lost her husband. Then there was a lady she came to me that was, I'm talking about 10 or 11 years ago. Okay. Then when she came to me, she was like, she needed to feed her kids. I went. Then I felt to myself, I had, I think I had a thousand naira, and I said to myself, my husband would definitely come and bring something to me, but she had no one to bring anything for her. Mm -hmm. So I gave her all I had on me. Then since then I said, oh, you know, what, you know this part of the world, when a woman loses her husband, you know, everybody, she's been deserted, she's been abandoned by everybody around her, mm -hmm. even her family. Then I said to myself, okay, if other people, if a woman like me can be suffering and I have little, out of the little I've gotten, I can still help out. So that was really being a woman, and I said that we are we weaker versus. And I said that there's no way if you have you have kids, four kids, you are not really even if you have if you have a very good job, there's no way you can get up four kids, paying house rent and all that. So I just felt okay, I am a woman, then I need to touch other women. That was why I picked on widows. Mm. Interesting. Now, um, we, you, you mentioned about uh, how um, in Nigeria, or in this part of the world, uh, widows are usually stigmatized in a certain way and abandoned in a certain way. So uh, this leads me to my, set, yes. my next question. How important is it for women to be uh, you know, financially stable in a marriage on their own and uh, and you know for 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 and as, as a widow how is it important for her to also be financially stable because some in this part of the world it's a it's a notion that okay the man would probably uh, it's okay for a woman to not do anything or be a full-time housewife while the husband is the one bringing all the financial earnings and in unfortunate situation where the, she loses the husband it becomes a problem so how, is it, how important is it for a woman to be financially stable on her own 
in a marriage in a case like this? Yeah, like I keep telling any woman that come across that there's the one thing you have to do, you have to be empowered, no matter how small. Mm. You must be able, yes, you must be able to support your husband even when he's alive. There's one thing I tell them, there is no way, you can't be a liability to anyone. You as a person, as a woman, before you got married, you have a purpose. And that purpose, you must fulfill it. Then when you got married, uh, the, uh, uh, when you got married, that marriage is being added to your person, your personal person, the original person you are. Then by that, you still have a purpose. And that purpose, you must fulfill that purpose. The purpose is to touch other lives. How will you touch other lives when you can't cater for yourself? Then it's very important for all women to have something to do. It is very, very important. Let's even forget about losing a husband or something. Something can just happen. Then if you don't, okay, as a housewife, food housewife, and the husband just die like that, what yeah. will happen? You can't cater for the kids. The, the, the kids will become vulnerable. You can't cater for yourself. Mm -hmm. Everything will just go down the drain. Then you see them, we have a lot of kids on the road who are from um, fatherless kids. I have a lot of them. And I keep telling them, there is that, that was why I started giving out, I started empowering women in labor state. Because I believe even if you are working, no matter how much you're earning in a month, in a month may not be able for you to get up for your kids. We know what the country is saying. We know what the economy is like now. Then I keep telling them, you must have something to do. You must have something doing, no matter how small. There was a, there was a time I empowered a widow. She was not doing anything. She was full outside before she lost her husband. Then we empowered, we empowered her with just a freezer. And so the, the last time I had my annual events, she was able to, to give back. She gave 10 cartons of noodles. I was really inspired. Boom. So that's what we keep telling them. I keep to any woman I come across, there must be something. You must have a plan B. Apart from an income, you must have sources of income, not even only one as a woman. We know what the country is, you know what we have, you know how everything is. Even if the man is, I can tell you that there are so many couples that cannot even cater for their kids. Talk less of a woman, talk less of a widow. Hmm. So I keep telling them, it is very, very important, not even for you alone, for others around you, for you not to be, for you to be able to reach out to others, to take care of your immediate needs. You may not be, whatever you are doing, you don't want to be a billionaire or a millionaire from me, but just to, not to beg, just have to try as much as possible to meet your immediate needs. Hmm. So it is very, 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 very important for every woman, to be empowered, very, very important. Even why the man is alive, very, very important. Interesting. Now, um, I, I like the fact that you have uh, um, addressed that, but uh, let's even talk about uh, the stigmatization uh, that comes with being a widow. In this part of the world, like you said, the women are usually um, um, abandoned or, you know, set aside. So how, how do you think this can, can be tackled? What exactly do you think needs to be done for, uh, to let the society know that this is not uh, the right way to go when uh, the issue of uh, a widow arises? What do you think can be done regarding this? Yeah, firstly, I would say when a woman is and being empowered, when you have, when you can stand on your own, when you can stand on your own as a woman, mm -hmm. being abandoned will not have so much effect on you because you will not be expected from anyone. But like, I would like what you, what you said, I would like to tell the society that that is inevitable. We are, it's just a price for everybody to pay. Mm -hmm. Then if a woman loses her husband, we should not add more to our sorrow. We should not add more to our burden. Because you know what it means? When we lose, when someone lose, um, when someone lose a very close person, a loved one, not even husband now, say a friend and a sister, we know what it is. You know how the impact on us. Talk less of a husband who has been a friend, who has been a father, who has been everything to that woman. The trauma, is much honor already than to add more to it. 
So what I would like to say now is this, that every family, you and I, to try as much as possible, show more love to widow around us. Because they are just, psychologically, they are defeated, morally, in everything about them, especially when they were very close with their husband when he was alive. So we should try as much as we can to even support them. A lot of, a lot of, from other parts of the, like, the, I don't want to mention any uh, uh, part of the uh, country now. Like some part of this country, they have, that they are culture that, that, that is very, 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 very bad and very, very uncovered, very, very terrible when it comes to attacking, uh, attacking widows. Mm -hmm. They, they are widows go through a lot of stress, a lot of torment, a lot of a lot of things I cannot even mention now when they when they lose their husband, mm -hmm. which is very very bad. And I should, I, if I can tell you something, why they are doing that is maybe because of the man's property. They want to get the property from the woman. They don't want the woman to take care, to be in charge of the property. I think that's the major reason yeah. why most families are always against a woman anytime she loses her husband. Interesting. Okay, um, um, we're looking at uh, a woman being empowered and being financially stable in any case. Even if, when your husband is alive, you should be uh, a contributor to the marriage and not just yes. being a liability, like you said. Uh, so now... Um, in, 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 in light with this conversation, we know that uh, there are organizations who um, uh, cater for widows and uh, like organizations like yourself. But would like to ask, um, do you really, do you get uh, a society aid or government aid, you know, for uh, running an organization like this that caters for widows? Or if, and if you do, uh, do you, would you say you need more done? Can it be improved? Or would like to hear on that, on that sphere from the government's angle now? Yeah, since I've started um, the foundation, I have, normally I have an annual event for all widows. Okay. This we do on weekly, monthly basis, but there's a particular annual uh, event for widows where I gather widows from all over the country, from Lagos, Ibadan, everywhere. I have not gotten any aid from the government. The one I've gotten in the past was from my friends. From initially, when I started, I was spending all my funds. But when they saw what I was doing, when people saw what I was doing, they started coming up with, oh, funny boys, I have a token I want to add up to this. I want to contribute to what you are doing because what you are doing is very fantastic. Mm -hmm. We want to be part of it. They started donating their token, which has really, really helped me to expand, um, to expand more. And so, as really, like, when I started, I started with 100 widows. The last one I did was 500 widows. So when they started adding to me, when they started contributing, when they started a lot of encouragement from people, not government now, mm -hmm. from family and friends. Okay. A lot of people, a lot of sponsors, a lot of uh, donors, a lot of, you know, then it's really encouraged to me. So I said, okay, I need to do more. I need to do, and I, I can tell you a lot of women are suffering. A lot of people are really, really suffering. You have to go to the grassroots to know what is going on. I have a team. I have a, mem a team member. Sorry, I have a team. Okay. I, I have close to 60 persons in my team. Mm -hmm. You know what we do? We do our background checks. We know people who are really in need. You know, we are in Nigeria. I mean, a lot of people will say, oh, because my husband is not responsible, I'm also a widow. Mm -hmm. We don't okay. attend to those people, yes. Mm -hmm. But that is why I have my, my team. And they are doing wonderfully well. We mm. go around, we do background checks, we know who and who is really in need of what we want to give out. That is why we don't give out, we don't empower people wrongly. What we do, if you are a tailor and one way or the other, you are not able to get uh, equipment mm -hmm. to continue what you are doing, yeah. then who we'll, we'll interview you? We do the background check. We know that you are ready to work. Then we get a sewing machine. We invite you for the annual event. We don't even inform them. We just invite everybody. Like, okay, let me just give you an instance. Okay, I have like I have two, three widows. One has a shop. One does not have anything doing at all. 
Then the one that has the shop has few things in the shop. I will attend to the one who has nothing before attending to the one who has a shop. Mm. That is how we operate it. So that we know that we are really reaching out to people who are really in need. Mm. We don't just say, oh, this is a widow. Even if you come, we take their contact, we, we put it on media, we take contact from them. We go as far as, we do as far as going to their houses to check if really they are widows. Interesting. So that is what we do before. Yes, we do that because we don't want to, we don't want to reach out to wrong people. Hmm. So it's, so it's, that's it's, what we do. it's, it's good that uh, you get to do the background checks to know exactly how to oh. empower these exactly. women. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. like you said, yes. it's not a, it's not a general method suits all. You have to go to them to find out exactly what they need and meet their needs respectively. That's quite interesting. That's and when we, yeah, when we invite others, we can't empower everybody. Like we have close to 500,000 women. Then what we do, we give up foodstuffs, clothing, like assholes, give up. But out of all of them, we at least empower nothing less than 20 at every point in time, nothing less than 20. We give out working capital. We have a lot of widows who have petty, petty trading. We give out working capital to support them. Out of those widows that we can't empower, I picked like 15 of their kids who are on my scholarship now. Then that would take a lot of stress off them. Looking for school fees, looking for house rent and all that. We just look at their cases, mm -hmm. how critical the cases are. So that is how we attend to them when it comes to empowerment. Hmm. Interesting. That's that's very nice. So, uh, seeing that you've been doing this for quite some time now, like you said, uh, we'll just try to know what. Okay, I think we lost a little bit of technical issues there. The network is acting funny today, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, we've been discussing about uh, uh, the empowerment of widows, and uh, we've had a very, very interesting conversation with uh, Adebimpe Akinfola Jimmy. She's an entrepreneur and a CEO, and uh, she also runs an NGO, Honeyballs Foundation, that uh, caters to widows and empowers widows. Where the conversation is being in, put out there, and I believe that it's a high time that we pay attention to this uh, aspect of society and a good one to her NGO putting out uh, this work for the widows and seeing ways they can empower them and make them better people in the society also. Well, uh, due to some technical issues, we couldn't wrap up that in the conversation, but uh, I believe uh, we were able to get one or two things out of that. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.